Hey guys, Crypto Sunday, and it's another one of those fairly strange weeks. Uh, I'm up £60, 0.03%, uh, um, but it's been a very sort of choppy um, up and down week with some of the news. Uh, had a few sort of spikes, so let's have a look. So the big headline, uh, but probably shouldn't come as sort of all that much of a surprise, is that the SEC have said the BlackRock and Fidelity ETFs are inadequate, as they currently are. Um, this isn't necessarily a uh, complete no. Uh, apparently this does sort of often happen in um, sort of somewhat controversial uh, ETFs that they, that do end up getting through. Uh, you can, you know, obviously, if you want to just put a, an S and P five hundred um, ETF through, that sort of just sails through generally. But anything that does sort of have um, some sort of uh, controversial parts to it, uh, they will often come back and say that's not quite right, amend it, and resubmit that sort of thing. Um, so this is the first time that they haven't just waited, you know, their sixty days or ninety days, whatever it was. And uh, they've just delayed it. Um, they've sort of come back straight away within um, within a week or two and said uh, they need to do something different. So they've sort of re-amended their wording and uh, sort of resubmitted it, I believe. And the others are now um, doing the same and sort of jumping on the uh, Coinbase. It seems Coinbase uh, surveillance. Um, so yeah, be interesting to see if that goes through. Um, also, whether it is actually Coinbase, um, who would be the exchange that they're using. I think they're saying they would uh, use Coinbase for custody, um, but they haven't actually said uh, Coinbase as the exchange. Of course, uh, SEC are suing Coinbase, so it would be interesting to see whether uh, some of them use this new exchange, EDX, the uh, sort of uh, almost government-approved exchange uh, where they only list... Uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, and Bitcoin Cash. These sort of the quads that uh, everyone seems happy with whenever you get sort of institutional products. It's always those four because they're seen as safe, basically. Uh, so, yeah, as mentioned sort of last week, we got the uh, 2x leveraged um, futures ETF, which sort of sailed through, it seems. Uh, but the spot ETF is still coming up against hurdles but uh, it's down but not out supposedly I've, uh, I've seen quite a few sort of lawyers saying that this is uh, as I say quite quite normal for uh, something like this and it sort of could be seen as positive rather than just sort of waiting 60 days delaying it waiting another 75 days whatever it is delaying it again and then just saying no so to be coming back within a week sort of saying you need to do this, that and the other, is constructive. We've got MasterCard continuing to uh, sort of push into crypto in various forms. Uh, they're launching a beta of a blockchain app store. So it's a little bit sort of uh, unusual. Um, a multi-token network uh, coming this summer um, was set to launch in uh, beta in the UK. And they've sort of been working on this for quite a while, it seems. Um, they haven't sort of mentioned using um, a, any sort of existing blockchain. Um, uh, the idea in, hinges upon selling developers on building on MasterCard's permissioned blockchain. So it does make you think this is going to be a sort of centralised thing within there that uh, sort of isn't using any uh, existing blockchain, which... I guess is competition for uh, our sort of traditional decentralized cryptos and sort of could be seen as uh, a bit of a negative the uh, sort of old guard traditional uh, finance system basically making their own version of crypto uh, they have sort of partnered before with uh, various blockchains and sort of exchanges uh, Binance, uh, Bybit and people like that um, for having uh, prepaid crypto debit cards um, so they're not afraid of uh, getting involved with current players in the industry. They're talking about tokenized bank deposits, um, which you've seen sort of uh, people like Larry Fink of uh, BlackRock uh, suggesting that uh, sort of vast swathes of uh, the traditional finance industry could be tokenized and uh, 
yeah, maybe MasterCard could be sort of pushing into that. I'm sure they're all sort of uh, working on it behind the scenes, or at least sort of testing things. But yeah, MasterCard are at least making it public. But could see uh, could be seen as a potential negative, a more sort of centralised, you know, behind closed doors, not using any of the uh, current current crypto projects. This is quite good news for Solana. Uh, the D-Bridge feature uh, seems to be sort of bringing uh, Solana and Ethereum and sort of the Ethereum layer twos together uh, more and more, which I do think is pretty good. Uh, they're sort of seen as um, competitors, but uh, Solana certainly seem sort of uh, happy that they can both live in the same space, basically. Um, uh, Vitalik has actually been quite sort of outspoken uh, in favour of Solana over the last few months. He sort of said, uh, basically, it's a shame that they're getting sued. Uh, he doesn't see sort of the need for it and uh, uh, sort of hopes that they do well, basically. He doesn't see uh, winning, uh, he put winning in inverted commas uh, through the others sort of getting shut down, basically, by the SEC as really a victory, uh, because presumably that would just make the the whole crypto industry smaller, and uh, I think he's basically saying sort of Solana has its use and its strengths, and so does Ethereum, and they could both sort of coexist in a, a much bigger world. And uh, this sort of thing, linking the two together, uh, I think is just a, a good sign that that could be the case. Um, you sort of, you know, bridge over to uh, Solana if you want to use sort of the uh, speedy features that uh, they have and sort of NFT compression and that sort of thing and uh, go over to Ethereum for sort of the scale, current scale at least and uh, yeah, the sort of layer twos and uh, sort of specific um, applications that could go on layer twos rather than just using it all on the one uh, big Solana network. So I did see this as uh, positive and sort of good for uh, them not to be at odds, basically. You don't want to see sort of uh, top brass at uh, both blockchains sort of attacking each other and just trying to cannibalize each other's business, really. So, speaking of Solana, um, I just thought I would have a quick look at the DeFi Llama stats. So, this is sort of how much people are using the token in uh, various sort of DeFi protocols and trading, lending, and that sort of thing. Um, and yeah, I sort of uh, keep looking at it compared to over the last three months, and it's sort of been on a steady uptick. Uh, sort of 12, 12 12.8 million up to 14.5, although it's come down from uh, quite a bit higher in mid June at least. Uh, but sort of a steady uptrend. Uh, this is in uh, sole terms. I always think it's better to uh, look at. Uh, the token itself rather than uh, USD because this is actually people you know using it less and using it more rather than just uh, USD would include uh, the price going up and down which isn't necessarily fair uh, you could have this at a sort of steady 15 million um, and sort of activity not going up or down but it would be uh, quite volatile in USD and that often gets painted as you know more people are using it less people are using it and in fact, it's just the price going up and down. So, yeah, Solana sort of not looking too bad. Uh, down a little bit since uh, June, but up overall. Um, whereas Cardano is still just motoring ahead. Uh, it's all 300 and 360 million um, Cardano, or ADA, at the beginning of um, April, up to 500 and 550 million. So that's uh, a nice number. So granted, in uh, USD terms, this is still uh, lower than uh, Solana at uh, 200 and, about 100 million uh, lower than Solana, but it's on a uh, steady uptrend. So that's always uh, good to see. Um, and compared to Ethereum, obviously they're all uh, dwarfed, absolutely dwarfed by Ethereum, a uh, hundred times. Um, even Solana on Ethereum, but in uh, in Ethereum terms, it is coming down on a basically the opposite of Cardano, just a steady trend downwards. Um, whether this is more people staking uh, on the sort of you know the official uh, staking protocol rather than using uh, DeFi, maybe people were sort of lending on uh, DeFi platforms 
you know, to get a bit of yield and now the staking offers a similar yield or maybe sort of a bit less but more um, more secure, um, people are going for that, I guess. So 16 million down to 13.8. Uh, and if you look at the uh, staking numbers, I believe they're up sort of quite significantly um, where people thought, uh, obviously, being allowed to unstake uh, the sort of fear was that uh, billions would be coming onto the market, but it seems quite the opposite so far. So, yeah, that's pretty good. Ethereum obviously doing uh, better than the others, but yeah, Cardano on the uptrend, Solana slightly on the uptrend. And so just have a look at the coins for the week. Uh, as I say, very, very little move uh, at all. Um, Bitcoin down 0.6%, uh, Ethereum up 0.3%, so if those two are doing that, you know there isn't going to be a huge amount of movement. Um, Solana actually doing uh, really well for the week, uh, nearly 11% up. Uh, I was sort of hoping maybe to uh, buy sort of just a little bit more, um, but yeah, I don't really sort of fancy it at the moment. Maybe if it uh, comes down from this sort of, if it's a temporary uh, pump up. We'll see. Uh, Chainlink, 2% up. Uh, Cardano, 2.8% down. Um, XRP, 1.6% down. That's uh, That's been really struggling over the last month where uh, everything's been sort of doing pretty well. Um, Audius, worst of the week, 10.8% uh, down. Not really seen any significant news on that. I will... Uh, Check the dashboard, considering it's a new month, see what the uh, June figures were like. Uh, Quant, 2.9% up. Uh, Matic, 0.3% down. Uh, Power Ledger, nearly 5% down. Gala, 9.4% down. Uh, Basic Attention Token, 0.4% down. Uh, VeChain, 10.2% up. And uh, internet computer 4.43 percent down. So uh, internet computer has uh, dropped below V chain now. Um, so yeah, that's uh, coins for the week. As I say, no move overall. And I guess we're just waiting on more news from the ETFs. So what do you think? Are we uh, getting an approval after many many rejections? So leave your thoughts in the uh, comments below. And like and subscribe. See you soon.